Hello everyone. The five C's. The five C's of Arizona. Copper, cattle, cotton, citrus, and climate. Those are the five C's of Arizona. The five C's of survival. Cutting, combustion, cordage, containers, and cover. Let's talk about inside your minivan. For those of you who are getting ready to go, but don't know what to fill your minivan with or your SUV, those are the basic vibes and you can start with those. You're cutting, of course you're gonna need a knife you're gonna need to be able to cut things. You could be out there on uh, BLM land, you're gonna need to cut. Um, I suggest, of course, you're going to have a knife, a parry knife, probably for cooking. Um, but also get a bushcraft knife. Yes. As far as combustion, yes, you're going to need lighters. I would get, um, I would get a large pack of big lighters. They weigh nothing, so keep them in your van. Um, matches, um, a strike, a magnesium, a flint strike. Get a couple of those. Because those can wear down after a while if you need to use those. Okay, cordage. You are going to need rope. I mean, even if it's nothing more than covering um, your minivan with, uh, you know, those emergency blankets that I showed you. I did devise a, a better system way at the end that the next time I go on BLM land, I'll show you how I do it. But I did use bungees, which is cordage that's in that group, to kind of hold them down, the one that I put on the top of my van. So, um, yeah, so you need some cordage. And I can leave a couple links uh, for different types, or I'll show you a couple pictures. Containers. You're going to need containers, even if it's just bins, but you're going to need to hold um, liquids when you uh, heat up. I showed you what I use. Uh, you're going to need a container to drink with. If you were out bushcrafting out in the wild, you may have one container or maybe two that nest inside of each other, and that's all you need for that because you're going to be backpacking. But I think in your minivan you can carry a little bit more containers. So those are going to be your basics. And then your cover. Of course, your minivan is going to be your cover. But you also need other covers. I have my emergency blankets. I have also a couple of... Um, tarps that I carry with me. <clears throat> so you can start there. Start with the five C's. Now I have mentioned because of the climate out and about, you know, non-stressful, but there are still areas in New Mexico that are um, quarantined off and you can't get in but you also can't get out. And uh, that I wouldn't want to get in a situation like Let's say I was sitting in Tucson still and this cropped up. I would want to go. And if you were still in your um, home, you might want to do the same. So I say, why wait? You know, get on Craigslist or your local paper and start looking for a decent minivan. And uh, start putting your five C's inside of it. And then you can build from there. And I've already showed you. Well, yesterday I showed you how I have things anchored down, and I kind of gave you a little bit closer view, a tour of what's inside my van. So this can be a big start. I would say don't spend a lot of money right now because you may change your mind later on what you want, but don't get something so cheap. Follow your instincts. Is this going to be good for me? Is this going to If it's going to fall apart, if you think it's going to fall apart, don't get it. If it's all you can afford, get it. If you can afford even more, go for the best because you want it to last a very long time and you're worth it. You're worth it to have nice things. So um, that's my advice on the nomad life and the traveling life and the survival life and the get out of, get out of dodge type life. If you need to get out, wouldn't it be great to uh, throw your family in or just throw yourself in, uh, get your fanny pack, get your bag, and your get out bag and just throw it in there. And knowing that you already have things that you need inside your man that you've already um, prepared for. So that's my advice for today. More to come. 
Speaking of essentials, when I first started out, I did not have any power banks. I used, basically, I used my, um, my 12 volt cigarette lighter for powering up my phone and my iPad. I had an iPad at the time, burned my iPad and my iPods and um, to power up my fans. I had, they were battery operated. So that's what I'd use. That was miserable. It really was. I felt like I always had to keep driving. What a waste of gas. I always had to drive. And then I always felt like I had to find the library. So I spent a lot of time at the library while I was still in Tucson when I first got inside my van. Um, but that was kind of miserable too. I mean, why do I just want to sit at the library all the time? And right now that's kind of like hard because the li most libraries aren't open across the country. So as far as essentials go, if you want to make your life really easy, get yourself a power bank and get yourself a, um, a solar panel that uh, can go with it. Usually with a power bank, they can't handle much more than 100 watts. So get yourself a 100 watt Renogy and make sure that if you do get a Jackery, make sure that you get the proper um, extension for it, an adapter because they use uh, SAE -S -E -E and Renogy uses um, MC4s. But if you want to just get, if you get a Jackery, then you can just get their uh, solar panel. They're like $100 more and they're not waterproof, which is, hmm. I mean, that's kind of silly because you know they're going to be outside. I don't know, you know, it doesn't seem uh, wise to me, but um, some people use them. So I would definitely get yourself that and uh, invest in it. If you can afford it, invest. Another power bank that you can get is maybe a smaller power bank that it folds out into solar so you can put it out. That would be nice too, but that's only going to be, um, only lasts so long and it's going to be probably only best for like your, your phone to power that up. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. And if you're in, in a minivan or an SUV and it's in the summer, it's gonna be uh, warm, get yourself a really good spray bottle. You're gonna to wanna to spray yourself down off and on throughout the day. And what I did, I went to Home Depot and found that uh, five-year guarantee one, that gray one. I mean, I highly recommend it. It wasn't that expensive, so that's another essential. But we'll keep going. As, as days go by, I'll mention more essentials for you. We've got ducklings, the first of the season. Yay! Well, I got a mouse to feed. Yeah. <laughs> Bonk, yeah. Yesterday, I went on Amazon Prime, and guess what movie I saw that they finally added? The Goldfinch. And I mentioned the book. So I thought, well, all right, I'll give it a try, give it a whirl. Um, I was pretty excited about it, so I started to watch it. And, oh, no, uh, probably after the first half hour, I uh, I just turned it off. I think it would have ruined it for me. Um, here's my take on taking it from a book to a movie. And I don't think it's always been this way. I think over the past few couple years that it's actually been this. Is they take a book and the book usually has um, you know some humor and some humorous um, characteristics of a certain character. And they're endearing and they're kind of quirky. And so far in I gave the example of uh, the Rainmaker with Matt Damon and it's a book, John Grisham. Uh, that actually had a, a lot of really, uh, John Grisham has good humor. It's very subtle, but it does kind of make a hee hee, kind of giggle. Uh, the Rainmaker really didn't have much in there. I thought, ah, oh, they could have done so much more with it. Well, I know. Uh, the goldfinch couldn't have been more serious. I mean, it was like serious. And it went from bam to bam already. There's so much, I don't know if they can put such a, a large book into a movie unless the movie was gonna be as long as like, <clears throat> like Gone with the Wind or something. Because the goldfinch, there's so many little um, 
nuances in it that tell the story. But it was so serious. I mean, Andy. I mean, they made Andy just a little bit too small, first of all. And Andy would say some of the most humorous things. I mean, he was quirky. He was very odd and quirky, but that was, you fell in love with Andy. Uh, he was about as geeky as they get. But um, they took all of that away. And uh, they didn't even do a good voice. The narrator of the audiobook of Goldfinch uh, did Andy's voice so well. They kind of picked a weird, um, I don't know, a weird actor to do it. So I did turn it off. I just wanted to give an update on the Goldfinch. I do not recommend the movie. Um, and then um, Hobie, Hob Hobie, he, uh, no, he was not who he should have been. I mean, even he was quirky, and he said some of the funniest things in, 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 in a funny way, but, yeah. So, anyways, that's my Goldfinch update. Today is wig out day. Wig. <laughs> Let me try on a few wigs. Today is Jerusalem Day. There's another name for it. They now call it Jerusalem Day, but it's Yom something. And um, I didn't write it down, so. But I thought it'd be easier to call it Jerusalem Day. I love Jerusalem. Look to Jerusalem for the end times. When things happen in Jerusalem, you know, time is getting close. So it's Jerusalem Day. Hooray! Hooray for Jerusalem! So I wanted to let y'all know that uh, this weekend I'm leaving Tucson and I'm going to be gone for like three or four days. Um, I'll, I'll be back because my granddaughter has an event uh, coming up in like a week, week and a half. So I want to be here for that. Uh, but yeah, I'm going up north with a friend and we're going to get on some BLM land if we can find some with good roads. She also has a minivan, so that'll be fun. I haven't seen it yet. Um, so I'm excited. I'll leave tomorrow afternoon and go up to uh, Phoenix to meet with her, and then we'll go travel. She bought some um, walkie-talkies that can go up to 20 miles, so that'll be interesting. We can walkie-talkie each other. So um, it's a pretty cool tree, huh? People are carving on it. Ooh. Pretty though. It's a eucalyptus tree. We've got the ultimate wire here.